Now again, I'm going to grab all these, move them away. And starting up here, I just want to select this. And I'll, uh, I'll press U in this window here. And I want to go to unwrap. And then that will unwrap it into this window, the whole UV space as best I can. And with that, I want to go up to the UV tab here. And I want to turn on constrain to image balance. So with that turned on, when I select this object, I'm going to go into the scale here. If I select this, it won't go out past that UV. So I know now this is a perfect square. And all I need to do is fit it into this square. Now bear in mind, this texture atlas was put together in 10 minutes. It's not, I didn't put a lot of work into getting it right. It's only for a demonstration. I'm going to be going over how to actually make these from scratch as well and how to make them with multiple maps. So you got normal maps and roughness as well. So I know that now this is an entire UV square. So it's perfect squared. By I need to scale this down, so I'm gonna, um, how does it work here? Yeah, snap, I'm gonna turn my snap on, and I wanna snap the grid, and I wanna do it on move and scale. So every time I move this, it'll snap the grid points. So now I know that that's a perfect square, right? But I wanna do it so that it fills one of these guys, preferably the roof one. So I will bring it over here, and there we go. So now chances are, well, not chances are, what should happen is when I do the same with this, that seam that runs down the middle, you should there should be no visible seam there because these are perfectly snapped to the UV grid there. And those red lines might get in the way though, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go into edge mode Select all, and I want to clear the seams. All right, so in face mode, I'm going to select this object, or this section of the UV. I want to do the same. I want to go U and unwrap. Then I'll grab the edge, and I'll pull it out so that... Oh, something happened there. It's not actually snapping to the side. Probably not an issue. It's like you're talking, it's so small. I'll get it lined up and then maybe I'll just manually fix that. So I just want to pull that up again. It's going to snap until it gets to that point. Now, there is a seam there. So chances are one of these are twisted. So I'm going to select it and highlight it and press four and I can rotate. I want to rotate this one. Press 4 and then I'll rotate that. And if I hold control, it'll snap as I rotate. No, now it's upside down. Okay, so it must actually be this little overlap that's causing that. So I want to see if it'll let me, let me do this. No, it won't. So I'm going to have to turn the snap off and force it. The snap can sometimes trip you up as well. You just kind of need to be keeping a, keeping a close eye on your edges. And over this side here, I need to pull that back. Right. So, it's still upside down if I rotate it again. should do it. Yeah, there we go. So now if I go back into my modeling tab and turn the wireframe off, it's very slight. But you see kind of it is tiling. It's tiling pretty well. Alright, so you need to do that now with the rest of them. Isolate this and go into edit mode and now I can start doing the same on this. 
I want to move him out of the way for the moment. I don't need him. Oh, it won't let me out of the bounds now. And these things that are showing up are actually the rest of the object. They just have not been uh, UV at all. So I'll move them over with that. Right. Now I'll quickly just fly through this. Grab him. You. Unwrap. We'll do them all like this. Unwrap. Okay. Now starting with this guy. I'll pull him. I need to constrain again. Alright, this fella. Alright, so now I'm just going to grab each one and scale them up. And I might need to rotate. As I, a few of them as I go, depending on how they look. Okay, so that one's twisted, obviously, so we'll come back to him once they're all positioned. Alright, so we look at where the seams meet. Now we know that that one and that one are seamless. This one needs to be rotated, so I'll hover over the UV, I'll press R, and I'm just going to twisted and I'm going the wrong way so I need to turn it this way and hold control as I turn and it'll snap into place for me. The same with this, this needs to be rotated this way and this guy. Alright. Now, the texture obviously isn't great because now the tiles are too small. So you want to find a texture that when you cut it quarter of its size or shrink it down so it's fitting into quarter of the map, you want to have it so that they're kind of more realistic in size. So I'll go over a good site where you can get these textures for free as well. So you, you'll have plenty to choose from. So I just need to do the other side here now. But because of this hole that's running in the in the center of it, we can't just add cuts in the way we did on the last one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these objects and I'm going to use the lines that we've already cut as a guide and I'm going to cut through the mesh. So. The texture might get in the way here. I'm gonna go into flat shaded and I want to go orthographic from this view. So I know that they're the lines that I need to follow. But I don't want to cut this piece because I've already cut that. So what I'll do is I'll select this one and press A to select everything. We want all these poly selected because we're gonna use the bisect tool again. So click and hold here and bisect. So it's going to move this so you can see the key keystrokes. So remember that the bisect tool will only work on polygons that are highlighted. So you need to make a selection first and then it will cut through those. Because we didn't select this face, we're not going to cut through this any further. We already have the cuts on this. We just want to extrude them straight through. So I'll go into Equatographic here. And I'm going to zoom in as much as I can on this line. And I'll just pick where I think it should be and pull across. And there we go. So that added one cut. I need again to press A, select everything. Go back into autographic and I'll cut the bottom line. So this one doesn't actually have a center line, so I'll need to give it that as well. A to select everything, 
I'm going to autographic again and I'm going to slide vertically here along this center line. There we go. And now I just need to start breaking these up. So I'll go back into UV editing, take my polygon and start cutting these into squares. So U unwrap. So that brings up one of the more annoying things about um, the Blender UV workflow. I don't know how they thought this was a good idea, but it's it's so inefficient. For me to fix this, it should be as easy as just grab the vert and pull it down, but I can't. The problem is when I try to move this vertice, it will also move the one that it's connected to, in this case that, that guy. And if I try to move that, it's just going absolutely crazy on me. It would be the same if I selected just this one. I can't. The only way that I've found out to be able to fix that is to turn off the sync, UV sync selection. But if I turn that off, now my UVs disappear. So I've got to turn that back on. Now I need to select only, you can only select it in face mode. Select the UVs I want to work on. Then turn it off. Then go back into vert mode. Then fix my problem. Press G and snap that to the bottom. And then turn it back on. How they thought that was efficient is crazy to me. But that's how you fix that. And that will probably happen an awful lot, especially with this particular kind of workflow. So with that, I'll just continue on. Uh, select my object and now I want to snap to the top. And I know by this object, the way that little notch is cut out of the window there, that this should be down in that corner. So I'm going to press OR and hold control and I want to rotate that so that it snaps back for me. And I'll grab this corner and I'm going to snap that into the top square. And I'll do the same for the others. I'll quickly just unwrap them, similar to like what we've done already. Unwrap. Now this might be an issue. There'll be a lot of um, manual tweaking on this because it's not even a full square. It, it, this would be pretty much a nightmare. We'll cross that bridge though. I'll do the same with this side. Unwrap. And now the bottom two. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to select those. And of course, it's doing the thing. Alright, won't let me move. What could be the problem here? Maybe it is my constraint? Yeah. Alright, so something happened there. I need to... No, that one's alright. Something is missing. Yeah, this one here. Something happened that. So if I press U and unwrap that again. There we go, it's fixed. Alright, so there's my UV islands. What is this one? Oh, right, okay. Gotcha. Okay, so I want to twist this one now. Before I do that, I want to make sure those edges aren't flipping out on me. Need to constrain again. Okay, so that little notch is this fella. So I need to rotate him this way. And now I will map him up. Now I'll go with this guy. So 
so I'll need to rotate this fella this way. Okay, so we can't just pull him over here to constrain because he's going to give us a stretch UV then. We want it to stay this size. So we're just going to let's maybe move him and now we'll try scale him up. Okay, so we need to now bring him back this way. And I don't think that lined up very well. It didn't. We can see the break here and that overlap. So I need to select them again. I'm going to have to turn off snap for this. And I'm going to press G and just drag them. Snap didn't turn off. Let's drag them over this line here. Better if I could see the UV here. Press G and just move them. Okay, so he's, all, he's in line here, but he's not here, so that means, I think, uh, it needs to be stretched outwards a bit. And there can be a little bit of playing with it to get this right. There we go. So those can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. But uh, unfortunately, it has to be done. Right, now the other little pain in the ass. Okay, I'll press U and unwrap. You want to try that again with snap on. Okay, so I know that I need to be in line with that edge on this side. So this one actually doesn't look that bad. I think we just need to slightly pull them towards the far edge. Maybe that. Yeah, there we go. That's not bad at all. All right, now just the bottom two. So I'll turn snap on for this and rotate him into place. Unwrap. Okay, you just go ahead and re-rotate yourself. So this one I know is going to be squared. It just has a lot missing from the top. So I can just fill the UV like that and then manually pull that up. And that should line us up pretty well. Lightly off. But these are probably, the tweaks I'm making are probably a little uh, overkill, like they don't need to be that perfect, you're not going to see it. You're not going to see little uh, mistakes like that, it's just my own habit, I guess. So this I'm going to unwrap, and turn snap back on, rotate him into place. Now set him in. Fit him. Have a look. 
Okay, that one, that one went in perfect. Was, you can see by that little split there. And let's have a look here. Ah, it's good enough. It's good enough. I won't cry about that. So that's one roof exterior piece done. Now we just need to do the bottoms. And as long as that tug, it does, once you kind of get familiar with what you're doing, it does kind of speed up a little bit. It's not as bad. Okay, so some of these are separated. So I'll join them back quickly. It's control J. I'll do this in modeling screen so you can see, see my keystrokes. Right, I need to weld the verts. I'll also remove the seam, so I'll right click, clear seam. Select everything first, now I'll clear seam. There we go. Okay, press one, select all, merge verts by distance. Okay. Now I'll do these little little pieces here. Okay, so I actually cut these off already. I didn't weld them yet, so I'm going to do that first. I'm going to select one, select the other, Q and merge at last. And I'm going to do the far side as well. Now I can quickly just unwrap this, I'll select those faces, run them underneath. Quickly just press U and unwrap. But because I unwrapped that, it actually oh, went straight into the wood, which is what I planned on. Press that. Uh, right, so in the editor here, I'll just Grab this. I probably didn't give that a lot of room actually. Um, I'm gonna unwrap the other one first and then I'll adjust them together. But you see the, the basic point of a texture atlas now is we've got so many materials from one texture, which really just gives us an optimized scene as well. But no, this texture is very basic. I'm gonna, on the next video maybe, I'm going to um, show how to make one from scratch and it'll be a lot more detailed. Okay. I'm right, gonna select them and to close this out, I will just squeeze that in. be pretty low res but again um, this is half person uh, okay I'm gonna turn off snap there we go. just fill up here all right so that's the basics of how we're going to be UV oh god all of this so naturally I'm not gonna do every one I'll probably next I'll cover how to make the texture atlas from scratch, where to get your textures, how to compile them, how to make a proper material, how to set up the material. And then I'll use that and I'll make an example of maybe two or three more pieces. And I'd expect people would probably have enough information on that then just to go ahead and do it themselves. And from there, we'll go into plotting out a scene and basically putting all this stuff together. Right, that'll be up next.